Gamers, Bullets here, and this is a review of Watch Dogs on the PlayStation 4. Now before we even begin, just take note that this game is huge and it would take forever to cover everything in it. So I'm going to cover a lot of the basics and a lot of the cool things about it, and uh, hopefully it will suffice. So let's get started. First off, let's get to the story. I personally enjoy the storyline myself, as it's not your average started from the bottom now we're here bullshit scenario. You're not just some guy with a gun causing mayhem to expand your bank account and assets. You play Adrian Pierce, a man on a mission not for fame and fortune, but for revenge. As a professional hacker, someone apparently didn't enjoy your skills too much as they set a hit out for you and your family. That resulted in the death of your niece, and a grieving sister who wants you to just let it go, which obviously, you can't or there'd be no game. Going through the storyline, if you can get to it with so many different things to do, that is, you'll meet several characters, some you'll like better than others, but all telling a story that keeps you locked in and wondering what's next. I'm not much for spoilers, in fact, I fucking hate spoilers whenever they get dropped on me. It pisses me off, and it makes you just feel like, why do you even want to play this game right now, because you already know what happens. So I'm not going to go too much further into that. Let's get to the next thing. Next, let's get into the looks and the controls. The looks for a console game are nothing short of awesome, with real-time lighting and even reflection effects, although NPCs and even your own character do not show up in the reflections, only the atmosphere do. At 1080p and a steady 30 frames per second, it all looks great. Now, I'm sorry to say I cannot say the same for the PS3 version, because for one, I haven't played it, and for two, it's sad but true, but the console is nearly a decade old. So to expect too much of a next-gen look and feel from it is, is not very reasonable. The NPCs are plenty enough, the world is large, and a change of atmosphere from each location is noticeable, from busy downtown streets, to neighborhoods that look like you might not want to live there, to beautiful water to swim or boat in, to details in hills with grass, older looking buildings and bridges, tons of cars to see and utilize, and more. Not only are there tons of things and locations to visit, but there's also, as I said before, tons of things to do. From mini games of poker, a chess type challenge, to an old school arcadey feeling race against time on foot, to collect coins, to full digital trips where the mini games feel so well and look so well done that they're, they, they could clearly be classified as a full on bonus games, as in games inside of a game. Games that you would have bought separately on PlayStation Network or something. These games are so awesomely created that you will spend time and time and time again dying and trying them again. I have spent several hours on these, and even spending more hours to try to perfect them. By the way, if you play alone, as in the, the one that's called alone, there's no point in going through it without using your level up points. You, you don't get anything special. No uh, trophy, no nothing. Just a crazy hard challenge. Trust me. <laughs> but on the brighter side, they're lots of fun regardless. I found myself, like I said, spending a lot of time in them, and I'm pretty sure you will too. Each one posing its own challenges, and completely different than the other. The gameplay as a character on foot feels very much like a cross between Assassin's Creed, The Last of Us, and even a little bit of Gears of War. Assassin's Creed feel comes from the sneaking around, ease of one button takedowns, and the ability to fluently transition from platform to platform, or climbing over fences and cars simply by holding your run button and the action button simultaneously. The Last of Us feel comes from being able to craft your own explosives and gadgets from materials either found or bought, and the aiming of the guns feels similar to it as well, which is pretty spot on and accurate. The Gears of War feel comes from a very well done duck and cover system, where you easily move from cover to cover with a one button press and letting Adrian do the rest, which is very effective in heavy shootouts. All in all, minus the no melee other than takedowns, that sucks you guys, I really wanted to start beating people up. Oh well. Controlling Adrian is a breeze and a joy, as the animations for him are also done beautifully. Now let's get to one of the biggest parts of Adrian, his phone. With a phone, you will hack into NPCs for access to bank accounts, new songs, one-time hacks, and even side missions. Also, you can easily access your skills, mini games, trips, have cards delivered to you once they're bought for a one-time fee, check your stats, and access online gameplay as well. Also, the phone is essential to many missions as you will use it to hack into servers, cameras, set off car alarms for distractions, cause explosions in the atmosphere, and more. Needless to say, you will be using the square slash hack button a lot. Let's get to the driving. 
there are several car, truck, bike, and boat types to choose from, each having its own feel, look, and speeds. Being able to change your views is a huge plus, though I find the range view the most effective when being chased, so you can see all your surroundings. With World being your racetrack and playground, you'll have lots of fun wrecking others, crashing into things with great detail of shattered fences, bus benches, paper stands, etc. Though slightly twitchy when adjusting your direction by a few degrees, it still holds its ground and proves that driving in open worlds doesn't have to be a complete mess. Driving plays a huge role in online play as well as you can race against up to 8 other drivers at one time in an old fashioned racing with a twist. The atmosphere can still be hacked and you can lose your first place easier than you obtained it. Now let's go to the character progression. There is quite an extensive skill tree here, or skill dial as it appears, for the main game. Leveling up by escaping police pursuits, preventing crimes, finishing storyline missions, and more, you gradually acquire more skills and equipment ranging from skills to making driving easier, carrying more grenades, new things to hack, etc. This gives Watch Dogs a feel of constant progression, even if you are more so just doing side missions rather than following the main storyline. There are also skill trees for online challenges. Even the digital trips have their own little skill sets to utilize, giving you a feel that nothing is a waste of time in Watch Dogs and always leads to more progression as a player. Now let's talk about customization of character in cars. Well, it's pretty much non-existent. There are no paint jobs, mechanical enhancements, or attachments to be added to the cars. Even the characters' outfits are very limited, as they're all pretty much the same exact thing, just with different coloring and designs. Though this part kind of sucks, it still doesn't take you out of the fun as a whole. With so many other things to do, you barely notice these limitations. Speaking of so many things to do, here is a detailed list of all the locations there are to visit, including investigations, minigames, shops, missions, memories, and more. Though this game was hyped beyond all hypes, and it didn't exactly deliver its graphical promise of, in quotations, next-gen game, it still did pretty damn good. Here's something to consider though, Grand Theft Auto V had over a 200 million dollar budget. Watch Dogs only had a 70 million dollar budget. So all things considered, I would say they delivered a pretty damn good experience, especially for an unproven IP. It's ranked number one in Ubisoft sales for a reason, it's a good game. Though it does have some flaws, I admit, such as loopholes and escaping police with a boat, or allowing more of the cyborgs while you're playing the game alone, the mini game alone that is, you can let these cyborgs follow you and run out of bounds, causing them all to drop dead, which doesn't help much in the long run because they just reappear, but still, it was a nice little escape. And there's even a little, you know, once that I got stuck in a place, I was riding a bike and I got wedged into a, a railing and I couldn't move and the cops pretty much shot me dead but that only happened one time through all the hours I put in so overall they did deliver what they promised and that was a unique take on an open world game now let's get down to the nitty gritty all things considered in Watch Dogs the good the bad my final rating for this game is pretty high 9 out of 10 yeah yeah a lot of people complain that it sucks compared to GTA 5 but whatever it's not GTA you want GTA, go play GTA. Watch Dogs, its own IP, it's its own thing. It, you can't compare it. The only thing that even compares it to is the ability to take cars and cause havoc. I don't feel I don't feel right telling you to buy it or not buy it, but I will say I do not regret paying for this game at full price. Also, remember there is there's so much in this game it's impossible to talk about it all without doing an hour long review. I hope this review helped you a little bit to decide whether you want to play or not to play this game. I was not disappointed in any way, and I'm more than happy to finally have gotten to play it and own this on my own. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, share, click that like button, comment, and if you feel that I've shown you enough to keep you coming back, go ahead and subscribe. I have more reviews coming. Next one will be Murdered Soul Suspect coming soon. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Bullets out.
romantic comedy, the elevator would break down and we'd fall in love. <laughs> in a porn, we fuck like gorillas. <laughs> if the elevator broke down, obviously. Come on, up top. No? Alright. <laughs> Goodbye! A woman of a child and I didn't put up this time!